It's still August, but football season is only two weeks away. I'm Jared Lloyd, BYU football beat writer here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium for the second and final scrimmage of fall camp. Joining me, Jason Franchuk, BYU football columnist. Now, Jason, not a lot to talk about in today's scrimmage. This was a lot about depth, a lot of a lot of guys getting a lot of opportunities. What did you notice from, from the action today? Yeah, a lot of depth, and then at the end, a lot of good morale boosting. Some of these guys are not going to play a, a lot as they go forward, getting ready for Ole Miss, and it's nice to take the field, show what you can do. It's a learning experience for a lot of these guys, but they are deep, and this, my eighth year covering the team, obviously seventh with Bronco, and this is the quickest he sped up things as far as eliminating a scrimmage late in fall camp, getting ready for the first opponent a little bit earlier. He really likes this team and where they're headed right now. Usually this scrimmage was Wednesday of in traditional formats. Um, we're anxious to compete against each other uh, for three more days, and or maybe only two days, and we're combined with that will be Old Miss prep already beginning. So um, I think experience has been helpful, and with nine or ten returning starters on either side, based on how you count it, it's I think it's reflective. So we were able to get to the depth of scrimmage earlier. How much of that, Jason, do you credit to some of the coaches he's brought in, and how comfortable he is with the job they're doing? I think it's coaches. I think there's a very good rapport here. I think he made the right decisions. I was actually critical when the hires were first made from the aspect of they've prided themselves on having some non-LDS coaches or minority coaches, and they basically have eliminated that. I mean, they brought in guys who are familiar with Utah, familiar with the program, and for this program that wants to have a broader scope of a recruiting base, it, it's interesting to me that they haven't had that. But you can tell Bronco talked in July at the National Media Day about good fits, guys who had the best interests of the program and the kids party feels like he's got that. You can see the rapport with the young guys like Joe Dupay that they're real tight. Mark Weber's still here and his offensive linemen get along with him great. They were teasing each other, you know, as they usually do as they were warming up. And Brandon Doman has infused such energy and you've seen Brandon and anybody who's seen Brandon knows that he, he's just full of, full of spit and vinegar, so to speak, and not in an angry way, just likes to really move around, and he's a guy players on both sides of the ball really respond to it. I, I think uh, Coach Doman's done a great job with the offense. It, it, as a whole, it hasn't changed a whole lot. I think just how we're going about things has, has changed a little bit, just our attitude and just kind of uh, what we're trying to do, and, and, and I, I think... Uh, I think they've done a great job, all the coaches, and uh, you know it's a great offense to play in, and I'm real excited about it. Reminded me a lot of when Bronco Mendenhall first got here from New Mexico as the defensive coordinator, and even offensive guys really responded to his style of effort and play and practice. I've needed as much simulation as I could get. You know, I needed to be in the headset in the stadium and listening to coaches talk, and having feedback, and and so um, I'm really pleased with where it's gone. I've I've learned a lot, and. I, <laughs> I have a long ways to go, but I'm sure having a fun time. And Brandon had to be pleased with the way the number one offense yeah. came out here on the scrimmage. The number one offense only got one series, so Jay Keeps really wasn't on the field very much. He was on the sideline getting to relax a little bit. But that first drive, they came out, moved the ball down the field, capped it off with, a, I believe, a six-yard run by JD, JJ DeLuigi as he was able to get it into the end zone on that first drive. How important was it, do you think, for the offense to come out and, and be able to, to, to just do that in their only real opportunity? Oh, yeah, and you see a lot of good things out of even that one drive. Offensive line was really strong. We've talked a lot about four returning starters and possibly Houston Reynolds stepping in there to be the fifth, as you're going to write about, if I can plug our product, right, since <laughs> since this is on Herald Extra. But, you know, they get those, that offensive line, hard pad popping, open up a lot of holes. Uh, Jake Keeps was able to find some passes over the middle of the field, which is what they've struggled with in the past. Sure-handed plays, get the ball down, positive yardage. You know the offensive line isn't going to make mistakes for you. I mean, they're not going to be first and 15, first and 20 very often. Just a lot of good things about that, that group right now. And I think the other thing when you ask me about you know, what do you give the credit to coaches? I think these guys are better conditioned, and they say that every year. Training regimens change, diet habits change, especially for a guy like Jay Keeps, freshman and sophomore, but they are in better, better shape right now. I, I felt really pleased with, with what the offense did. I think, uh, you, know, uh, you know, first group in particular, we you know, had a great drive. You know, uh, put it down the field wherever we needed to needed to go. Uh, converted on third downs. Uh, you know, really just ran the ball well and, and complemented with you know play action, and short pass game. They're in really good shape. They look really good. In fact, Bronco Mendenhall thinks they look so good. He's moving up game prep for Ole Miss, which is only two weeks away. So he's going to start that a little bit earlier. He said. So 
big is that big for this team to be in that be at that point where they can can start that game prep? I, I think so. I, I think it's good for morale, and the reason that is Broncos 56 and 21 here. He's got a good rep. Players on this team obviously trust him, what he's doing. And if he's saying, hey, we're going to speed things up, we think you guys are ready, you know, maybe they'll have an issue. I mean, it, it's something new, so there may be some tweaking along the way. But I think that's a, a the kids, the players have to take that as a really good thing that Broncos are willing to do that with this particular group. Well, this particular group has two more weeks of practice, and then they actually get to start the season. I know they're probably ready for it already, but they go at Old Miss on September 3rd. And then two weeks later, Jason, that's the next time we're going to be here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium as BYU will host Utah, a rivalry game, first time since 1958 that those two teams have played in September. So it should be exciting as, uh, as BYU moves forward and prepares for the season.